What's up, everybody? And today we are reacting to World War II Oversimplified Part 1. This is by Oversimplified. <laughs> I will leave a link down below to the original video. Please go down there, click on that link, like their video, subscribe to them, and all that good stuff, because I'm sure this video is going to be awesome. World War II. What do I know about World War II? Well, I know a little bit. You know, um, I know some aspects regarding the Royal Marines in World War II, but I don't really know the grand scheme of things. I don't really know the ins and outs of, like, politically what went on. Um, I was very young when I was in the Royal Marines. I was 16 when I went in, so I did soak up a lot of core history, but um, a lot of it went over my head as well. So it's going to be really nice to watch this and kind of figure out what the hell happened. So with that being said, let's shut up, let's pull me head up here, and let's watch this and have some fun. This video was made possible by Skillshare. Hell yeah, it was. Churchill was a man with many talents. He was an artist, a butterfly enthusiast, and he had an unpublished manuscript about aliens. Cle Wait, what? He had an unpublished manuscript about aliens? Also, that animation is hilarious. I want to I want to hear this manuscript. I want to read it. What the hell? Clearly, he was a man with an insatiable thirst for knowledge. Yeah. Maybe he could have loaded up his computer and logged onto Skillshare. An online learning community hey. with more than 19,000 classes in design, business, technology, and more. Perhaps he was considering a side career in fashion, but didn't know where to start. On Skillshare, <laughs> he would find courses in fashion design Can and you garment imagine construction. Churchill? Or if he wanted to learn in app fashion. design, improve his photography, or just how to make a really good quesadilla, he would have found courses for all of these Amazing. and more on Skillshare. Skillshare gives you access to high-quality classes taught by genuine... All right, I'm going to fast forward a little bit. I get it. I get it, Skillshare. I get it a month and if you'd like to try right. out first then i've got a deal just for oversimplified viewers the first one thousand will share for j now without further here we go all right let's find out about world war ii <laughs> it's 1902 a young okay. man by the name of benito mussolini moves from italy to switzerland to avoid military service okay he gets big into socialism working for trade unions writing for socialist newspapers advocating a violent overthrow of european monarchies the whole shebang this this guy seems like an angry guy gets him in a bit of trouble with the Swiss police. So yeah, he gets he arrested, sent back to Italy, set free, returns to Switzerland, is arrested again, goes back to Italy again, completes his military service after previously avoiding it, and then after a brief stint as an elementary school teacher. What? An elementary school teacher? He got arrested twice. He finally returns to work as an avid socialist. His speeches what? and journalistic abilities made him famous among Italian socialists. He was anti-war, so when Italy colonized Libya in 1910, he rioted and got arrested. Then World War I came along, <laughs> and once again, he protested Italy's involvement. But then he thought, wait a minute, this war could bring about the social climate needed to overthrow European monarchies and bring about the socialist revolution everywhere. And suddenly he was pro-war. But his fellow socialists wow, didn't okay. like his new pro-war stance, so they kicked him out of the party. So then he said, you know what? I'm done with socialism. We need something new, not based on class divisions tearing us apart, but based on unity through nationality. We'll conquer the Mediterranean and reunite all Italian peoples, just like the days of the Roman Empire. I'll call it fascismo, and it will guide the Italian nation to greatness. This guy was not a nice guy. He was not a nice guy by the looks of it, guys. Also, this animation of him looking like this is hilarious. That's all well and good, Mr. Mussolini. But what kind of haircut am I giving you? Let's go with... <laughs> bold. <laughs> okay. Amazing. Amazing. I'm excited for this animation. It seems pretty cool. Italy had been on the winner's side in World War I, and they hoped they were going to get a lot out of it. But in the end, they only got a little, and they felt cheated. On top of that, a bad economy and weak governments meant that the Italian people were a little unhappy. So when Mussolini came along and said that he could fix everything, his fascist movement gained a lot of support. In 1922, he went to the king and said, make me prime minister or I'll make me prime minister. And the king said, <laughs> you and what army? This army. Fair enough. <laughs> then he went about establishing a dictator. Is that literally how he went though? Did he actually go and say, make me prime minister? Because holy, you gotta have some, you gotta have some kahunas to do that to a king, aren't you? ...with himself at its center. Europe had its first fascist dictator. Next up, Germany. Germany yeah. had been on the loser's side and they got absolutely wrecked by the Treaty of Versailles. They lost territory, had to demilitarize the Rhineland, had to reduce their army to just 100,000 men, couldn't have an air force, had to pay the Allies a huge amount of money that it didn't have, and a new Damn. rule was established that every Englishman withheld the right to walk into the center of Berlin, pick out any German they wanted, and spank the hell out of them. I made that last one up, but it helps you understand how all this felt to Germans. <laughs> <On t> <laughs> 
<laughs> that still happens today. On top of that, a bad economy and weak governments meant that when a small angry man with a silly mustache came along and said that he could fix everything, <laughs> the German people loved it. Hitler had been a soldier during World War I, and he was crazy patriotic, and nobody was madder than him about Germany's humiliation. He helped start a new political party, and in 1923 attended a march on Munich with his boys. And then he got arrested. But oh, his popularity geez. grew and grew. And in 1933, the president made him chancellor. He believed he was Germany's great destined savior. And he went full megalomaniac, establishing a dictatorship with himself at its center. It's crazy how um, something so extreme as Hitler and his party was able to slowly creep into government and slowly persuade people. And it's scary. It's really scary. Europe had fascist dictator number two. Hitler and Mussolini had a lot of the same ideas, but more importantly, they had the same enemies, and they started yeah. to get along. Anyone else want to be friends? Franco? No? You good? I do. Who's that? It's Japan, and they've taken over northern China. Let's mm. rewind a bit. Japan had isolated itself from the rest of the world for over 200 years until the Americans showed up and said, you're going to trade with us and you're going to like it. Then the Western <laughs> powers imposed a bunch of unequal treaties, meaning Japan's economy was bust. They also had no natural resources, so they decided to go get some. They went to war with China to gain a sphere of influence over Korea, and they took a bunch of China's stuff. But then the West said, hey, cut that out. And since Japan couldn't take on the West, they said, okay, I guess we'll just go home. Wait a minute, what are you doing? Taking advantage of a weakened China and setting up spheres of influence. But I was the one who weakened them. We know. And you guys didn't let me have anything. We know. That seems unfair. We don't think so. Ooh, that's giving a big old dig at Europe there, but it's true. It's totally true. It's funny how, like, um, you know, people in England, people in most of uh, Europe and America, we all see ourselves as the good people, but... Our countries have done some horrible things in the past, especially Britain. Britain has done some horrific stuff in the past, like really bad stuff. And America's not far from it as well either, but it is what it is. It is what it is. Okay, see ya. So Japan thought, screw this, and went to war with Russia and stunned everyone by actually winning. Then they fully annexed Korea, but they didn't stop there. In World War One, they took Germany's colonies and islands in Asia. And then in an incident that was maybe staged by the Japanese army, a bomb blew up a Japanese train in Manchuria, giving them an excuse to launch an invasion and take over. So here's the situation. Right, okay. Nazi Germany, fascist Italy, and Japan all believe they're racially superior, all feel hostility towards the allies, and all want to militarize and take over more stuff. And so they did. Let's start with Germany. Hitler hated the Treaty of Versailles, and now he was ready to begin on doing it. In complete violation of the treaty, the first Luftwaffe squadrons were set up, conscription was introduced, and he pimped up his army. The Allies did nothing. Then Hitler sent his army back into the demilitarized Rhineland, giving orders to immediately retreat if the Allies showed up. The Allies did nothing. With his military re-strengthened, he could now move on. Jazz up the army. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. Jazz up the army. Take over the world, question mark, and then profit. Oh my days. This is step two. He wanted to rapidly increase the Aryan population, and to do so, he needed Lebensraum. Or in other words, he would have to take over the world. But for now, a good portion of Europe would do, and he began eyeing up his neighbors. The Allies finally started to get worried, so they implemented a fairly useless diplomatic strategy called appeasement, and it went a little something like this. Hitler would say, I want that thing, and the Allies would say, you can't have that thing. Okay, you can have that thing, but no more. I want that thing. And repeat. In 1938, wow. Hitler... Wow, so it was a gradual thing. It was a gradual thing of him pushing the boundary constantly until people got fed up of his crap and decided to kick Hitler's ass. His army marched into Austria and just took it with no resistance. Boom, That's scary. this is Germany now. Next, he demanded to be given the Sudetenland, an area of Czechoslovakia with many ethnic Germans. The Allies held a meeting with Hitler in Munich and said, look, we're going to give you what you... Hang on, this meeting is about my territory. Shouldn't I come to the meeting too? Anyway, we're going to give you what you want. Wow. Really? Yeah. Wow. Just like that? Yep. What's the catch? Just sign this piece of paper promising you won't invade the rest of Czechoslovakia. Okay. Then Chamberlain returned home victorious, waving his signed piece of paper in the air, declaring crisis to be averted and the wow. continuation of world peace. And we built a statue of Chamberlain in his honor. And every day on the 30th of September, we celebrate Chamberlain Day. Hitler's invading the rest of Czechoslovakia. Of course he did. Of course he did. What? He's invading the rest of Czechoslovakia. Oh. You lied to me. What do you expect? I'm Hitler. Wow. Not to be outdone, Mussolini also wanted to get in on the action. He thought to himself, isn't there a not yet colonized nation somewhere which is so underdeveloped that the people would be defending themselves against our tanks with literal bows and arrows and wooden spears? Oh, there is? Fantastic. And so he took it. Italy... It's really heartbreaking, isn't it? 
Like people, why are people so greedy? Like people are so greedy. Why can't they just be happy with what they've got? Like seriously, people are so greedy, it pisses me off. Also wanted to control the entrance to the Adriatic Sea, so they occupied Albania. Then, in another incident which was maybe staged by the Japanese, gunfire was exchanged by Japanese and Chinese troops at the Marco Polo Bridge, and the Japanese launched yet another invasion against China. They wow. swept through Beijing and Shanghai, and then advanced through the Yangtze Valley to China's then capital, Nanking. Wow, Japan took over a lot. I didn't realize how much they took over. I knew they invaded China, but I didn't realize how much they actually took. That's crazy. It was here that saw the worst of Japan's shocking atrocities committed against the Chinese people. Back in Europe, Germany and Italy made their relationship status official by signing the Pact of Steel. Then, Hitler turned his eyes towards Poland and the hated Polish corridor splitting Germany in two. At this point, the Allies really had to put their foot down, and they warned him that an invasion of Poland would mean war. Hitler had yep. planned to continue his advance eastward, but he didn't want to end up fighting a war on two fronts. So for now, he made an alliance with Stalin, saying, How about we both invade Poland and split it between the two of us, and I definitely won't not refrain from not betraying you sometime in the future. Huh. Sounds... Good. This new alliance stunned the West. Wow. On the 1st of September, 1939, German troops entered Poland, and Britain and France declared war on Germany. Hell yeah. Kicked their ass. The Poles fought hard, <laughs> but they were no match for the two giants crashing down on them from either side. Then came a period known as the Phony War, where everyone just sort of sat around not doing much. <coughs> the French had launched a small invasion into the Saarland, but they maintained mostly defensive positions, and after a while, decided to just turn around and call it a day. Really? Speaking of France, the French were still super proud of their victory in World War I, and they hadn't really moved on from it. They still used horses, they dispatched messages by motorbike instead of using radio, orders from the commander-in-chief were usually pretty vague, and the troops were rarely inspected. It's crazy how like something's so extreme and it makes you it makes you think about like current the current time like how gradual change can end with something extreme and can really destroy the the ecosystem of what's going on right now um and the whole like I guess the whole economy of everything like if you think about you know the the trade deals between all these different countries and like how effective one little change can be in a lot of, like you can it can like have a domino effect on so many other things and obviously hitler had so much like i don't know he had so many warnings and with no repercussions where he just kept advancing he just kept advancing and nothing happened and then started doing this phony war and nothing was happening it's it it really it really <laughs> me off to be honest with you i can beep stuff out now guys they built a line of defenses along their German border, but didn't bother extending it all the way to the channel. And they wouldn't launch artillery strikes against Germany out of fear of being retaliated against. What? In a war, they didn't want to attack the enemy. And at first, the UK wasn't much better. Chamberlain still naively hoped that the war could be ended diplomatically. Instead of bombing raids, the RAF dropped propaganda leaflets over German cities, which one air marshal said likely did nothing but provide the continent with toilet paper for the duration of the war. They also wow. only sent 200,000 men to France, while the French had mobilized millions. Both Britain and France wanted to avoid a repeat of the First World War, and so yep. they wanted to keep the war as far from home as possible. So they turned their eyes north, towards Norway. Neutral Sweden was exporting iron ore to Germany through neutral Norway. So the Allies asked them if they could please stop exporting iron ore to Germany. But this request was refused. The lads. <laughs> oh, these, these, this animation's fantastic. I'm really impressed with this animation. One of the best I've seen, I think. Fused. Then the Soviet Union attacked Finland. So the Allies said, how about we land troops in Norway and move them across Sweden to go help out your good pal Finland and along the way maybe take control of all your own fields. But Norway and Sweden still said no. So the UK mined the waters around Norway to force any transport ships into international waters, and they also attacked a German tanker they found in the area. Hitler realized what the Allies were up to, and he quickly moved to secure his supply of iron ore. He launched an invasion through Denmark into Norway. The Allies rushed to land troops at keyports along the coast, but Germany had taken control wow. of Norway's airfield, and their air superiority decided the fight. It seemed like it was just one little trigger, and then boom, into motion, everything happened real quick. That's scary. That's really scary. The Allies had to retreat. After this slightly embarrassing failure, Chamberlain resigned and was replaced with Winston Churchill, who yep. had a slightly different approach to dealing with the Germans. Hitler's overall strategy was similar to Germany's First World War strategy. Attack France, defeat France, knocking out the UK in the process, then turn on the Soviet Union and win the war. During the phony war, the Allies had given Hitler time to prepare his forces. Now, he was ready to attack. The Allies had wanted yep. to place troops in Belgium, but Belgium had refused. And in a move that surprised pretty much no one, Hitler launched an invasion to get around France's defenses. The Allies charged into Belgium at full 
full speed to meet the German invasion head on, and it looked like a repeat of the First World War was coming. But this time, Hitler had a trick up his sleeve. Blitzkrieg. As the Germans advanced, they sent thousands of refugees westward, slowing down the Allies. Then, to the south, the French had left the Ardennes, an area full of hills and forests, pretty underdefended because they thought it was naturally impenetrable. Well, the Germans were about to penetrate it with everything they had. They smashed 50 Wehrmacht divisions through wow. and encircled the Allied armies at lightning speed. So this is when Dunkirk happened, when the British troops had to get off the beach ASAP, or they were all going to get killed. The best of the Allied forces were now trapped. The Germans squeezed in from all sides, taking out France's best armies and nearly wiping out the British too. But they managed to make a desperate last-minute escape yep. at Dunkirk, with British civilian ships even making the perilous journey to bring their young men home. Which, if you haven't seen that film, I highly recommend it. It's absolutely fantastic. Like, genuinely fantastic. With most of the French forces depleted, the Germans breezed through, taking Paris wow. and France fell. What the Germans couldn't do in World War I, Hitler had done just like that. Hitler hoped that with the fall of France, the UK would also lose hope and sue for peace. But quite annoyingly, it didn't. And he needed to secure the Western Front. So he tried to force them into... Never surrender. The British never surrender. Let's go. ...into submission with mind games. <laughs> the UK were now all alone, and Hitler wanted to emphasize that. First of all, just before France fell, Italy finally declared war on the Allies, making the UK's situation even worse. Next, instead yep. of just occupying all of France, Hitler occupied the coastal areas for defense, but allowed France to continue its existence as a German puppet state. This way, it looked like the UK's old ally had decided to switch sides. Right. Hitler also hoped that the UK wouldn't attack any of her old allies' navy bases or colonies in Africa, giving Hitler an extra line of defense to the south, but the UK made sure to respond to this by sailing down to France's navy base in Algeria and wrecking a bunch of ships. So have at it. Hitler then <laughs> began laying down plans for an invasion of Great Britain before German troops could land on British soil. He would first need air and naval superiority across the channel. The Battle of Britain over the coast where the British were awesome, as per usual. Waves of German bombers came while the completely outnumbered RAF worked bravely around the clock in an attempt to quell the German attacks. At first, the Luftwaffe targeted British ports and coastal facilities. Then it attacked RAF bases, crippling yep. the RAF's ability to defend the nation. And it looked like Hitler's great British invasion was coming. But then, Churchill ordered a small, pretty insignificant bombing raid over Berlin. It didn't do much damage, but Hitler was furious, and he immediately ordered the Luftwaffe to refocus its attacks on civilian targets in London. Children were sent off to the countryside, away from their parents, that's so scary if you think about it. Like, imagine being like, all right, my children have got to go off into the countryside because we're probably going to get bombed and killed. So have at it. And I remember I've seen pictures and stuff of like kids and they get issued like a little gas mask and they were on trains and stuff. It's like heartbreaking to avoid danger and frequent trips to air raid shelters became a daily occurrence but british morale held firm smiling knitting lounging casually these people have balls of steel this yeah we do yeah we do refocusing on london also gave the raf breathing space to reorganize so hitler kind of shot himself in the foot there <laughs> just a foot for now <laughs> Finally, the Luftwaffe sent one massive all-out attack on London, and the RAF successfully repelled it, destroying yeah, many did. of the German aircraft and placing air superiority firmly in British hands. Hitler's invasion had to be postponed, but the bombing of British cities continued for some time. Is that the end of part one? No! Oh, I'm, I'm going to watch the rest of this. If you guys want me to react to it on the channel, let me know in the comments down below. I'll certainly do that. The British are so stubborn. We're just stubborn people. That's it. We're just happy just to, to crack on with things, aren't we? That's why the British mentality... If you go into the military in England, there's this mentality where it's just like... Everything... Like, you just... Just crack on. Just crack on. You're fine. Just crack on. Mecha brew. And everything will be fine. Hence, like... Well, why have you seen, like, uh, films like Hot Fuzz where it's like... Go to the Winchester, have a pint, and wait for all this to calm down? That is literally the British mentality. Just wait. Have a cup of tea. Or if it's in the afternoon sometimes, have a pint sit down and wait for it all to just be over with and the british are stubborn they sent out the raf that absolutely took out the germans like an absolute bunch of legends and i'm guessing the second part is going to talk about uh d-day but it just shows like look at dunkirk where the civilians came out with all their fishing vessels and all these different boats and went and picked up the troops we could have had a lot of people die and if, if it wasn't for getting them troops back from dunkirk we probably wouldn't have been able to crack on with d-day and stuff so there's some pretty pretty amazing feats that happened for britain which is just a small island to survive against germany when they were dominating europe they were absolutely dominating obviously thanks to americans who came over to help us during d-day um 
we managed to take them back. And now we'll find that out in part two, I'm pretty sure. Um, and I'm very excited to watch that. So let me know in the comments down below. If you want me to react to part two, I will certainly do it. Maybe I'll put it up on Tuesday or something like that, guys. But for now, members, you're amazing. I love you. I couldn't do this without you. I honestly couldn't make videos every single day if it wasn't for these members right here. So thank you for supporting the channel as much as you do. I really do appreciate it. Links down below to all my socials, including the two links to Discord. We've got the military link for all things military. That's getting fit for the military, joining the military, join that Discord. We've got the second Discord, which is for all things geeky. SCP, d, &D Halo, Metro, Warhammer, Star Wars, all that good stuff. Second Discord. Also link down below to my podcast and my Twitch stream, where I stream Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And also a link down below to the second channel where we play D&D &D and a bunch of other cool stuff. So... Until next time, guys, I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.